So when was it that you decided to become an artist, Sally? Well, uh, um, pretty much from the beginning, from the first time I can remember. Uh, my, my dad drew blueprints for a heating and cooling company, and I would sneak down the stairs in my feety pajamas and <laughs> pester him after mom went to sleep just to see what he was doing and what he was up to. And he'd give me a glass of milk and some paper and a pencil, um, sketch with me for a few minutes until I got sleepy and then bring me back upstairs to bed. Um, and that's basically um, probably my, my first big interest is like, whoa, look at, look at what comes off the end of the pencil, um, the connection um, from what, what you're thinking and dreaming about and how you can process it to tell a story. So it was like that magical kind of connection that you, that, you know, the creation process, is, it felt like powerful. Yeah, yeah. In, in a lot of ways, um, uh, pe people started reaching out to me at a young age, um, probably in elementary school, um, when we had certain projects that were created that we had to work on, whether it was some sort of sketch or we used to do these little projects um, that went along with storybooks inside shoe boxes mm -hmm. and it just seemed like um, kid, kids other children students would pick up on what I was doing and they would say do you have any suggestions for me to, to help me with my projects so um, so you became an early teacher yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on a creative level. On <laughs> a creative level, not, not the official level, but uh, the, the mentor. The right, mentor. right. So how, how old were you then? Um, I, I guess probably in third grade was when we started working on those um, shoebox projects. So it, it was um, a lot of fun. Uh, little figurines that you could add and the drawings and sketches in the background and different papers with patterns. It was um, a fun, fun creative process. And you're from Pittsfield. Right. Um, I went to Crane School and from Crane, I went to North Junior High, which is Reed Middle School today. Um, and when I was there, um, our principal was Mr. Reed and the school's named after him. Um, from there, I went to Pittsfield High and graduated in 1984 with art awards. <laughs> so tell me, but tell me about that as far as, you because know, we hear this quite a bit, art in the schools. And there are many people who bemoan the fact that maybe we don't spend enough time with the arts in the schools. Um, I mean, I know you're not in the schools, today in the same way but you know what are your thoughts about that as far as your experience uh, for for me I felt like it was a major part of my life um, as as far as being able to express myself being a little on the shy side it, it always seemed easier to express myself through visual arts in some way um, so Pretty much um, at North Junior High, they had some good art programs there, as well as home economics programs, which uh, to me, everything is an art. And I think mm. home economics and art classes are so important, whether it's plating your meal, picking out your clothes, or, or anything like that, um, decorating your home. Um, but... Um, I took a lot of sewing classes too, which to me, that's, that's an art. I never figured that one out. <laughs> I think I got a C in sewing. I'm pretty sure. Um, it was Miss Doggins and she's a wonderful, wonderful lady. I just couldn't sew to save my life. But, um, but those things, I, I can't, we, it's really interesting because you wonder the, the things that have been phased out um, of school. Sometimes, you know, I, I, why do we not have financial literacy in schools? I think we should make sure we have things like that. But, um, but that's a sidebar. 
but the arts itself, you know, because we have ed reform and the focus on the MCAS and all these things, it seems like arts have been placed to the side, but when you are looking at what the creativity that is needed to live a wonderful life and to be not, and also productive in a lot of ways, you know, that creativity that's enhanced through the arts, um, my gosh, so important. It is. Um, I, I can remember a uh, teacher, Mrs. Dark Angelo, and whenever um, she did um, present projects that had a creative aspect, whether it went along with history or science or, or w whatever um, subject at the time, it seemed to draw in the majority of the students and pique their interest because they were, they were able to um, pull, pull out of their memories and their um, knowledge from what they've studied and make something creatively, which actually helps academically. Um, and that's, that's just the visual side of the arts. I feel like um, music is incredibly important too. It's another way for the students to express their feelings. Um, yeah, I feel like we're focused on one hemisphere of the brain uh, more and it, you need both hemispheres. And, and that's when you really light up as a human being is when you're, you know, the right and the left side of the brain is yeah. is being engaged. Uh, you know, you're a full human. Yeah, um, it's it's necessary to have both sides work together. Um, I I I put a lot of um, donations into the Berkshire Art Association, yeah. and the Berkshire Art Association is a group of artists and um, basically what they do is um, when when any of the artwork sells, it's a donation that goes into funding the schools and the college to help pay for different things like high school field trips to museums where some students might not have the money to pay for the field trip. They used to make those students stay back at the school and it was almost like a punishment but mm. with Berkshire Art Association they are able to get these fundings through the donations of artists and um, they don't they don't get left behind they get to go and take in the museums and go on the field trips and it helps with a lot of things for college programs to scholarships and um, supplies and things like that mm. what which um, I, I just feel like the arts is a necessary thing for everyday life. Yeah, it, it is. And the Berkshire Art Association, you know, everything that has been done uh, over the decades, you know, I think we're maybe due for another big public art project. I've had my conversation with Mark Tomasi and uh, and others about this. And I think maybe there is this sort of desire uh, to do, do something big again, a la like Sheeptacular or Art of the Game, that sort of thing. But speaking of that, you are a member of and one of the big uh, leaders, I would say, of the Clock Tower Artists, uh, I'll call it project, but the Clock Tower Artists that are located at the Clock Tower building, which I think is a huge really important seed to great things to come. The arts has always been a driver of our economy when we're doing it right. And this group, I've got a chance to get to know this group um, quite pretty, pretty well uh, over the last uh, couple few months or so. And, um, and I think there's something special happening over there. Yes, absolutely. So the clock tower is located in the historical building where Eaton's paper used to be. Um, currently houses the Berkshire Eagle. Um, so it's the clock tower business center. There's multiple businesses in there. But within the third floor, we have, um, I believe it's 13 artist studio spaces now. Um, possibly possibly more um they're the owner of the building david carver is building things out 
um, and adding more brand new spaces build, built to the artist's needs, whether they need ventilation and what, what size perimeters. And by the way, that's a sign of a really intelligent landlord to be able to see where the opportunity is because when you look at large spaces like that, that were maybe used for corporate office space or different companies where companies are generally using less office space uh, post COVID, now there's an opportunity that says, okay, well, there's great spaces here. Um, artists want spaces that aren't necessarily in their homes uh, where they can go to, you know, I think that's part of the the business model, um, and that is dedicated solely to their craft. Uh, there is a tremendous opportunity there, and I think David sees that, and that's why he's building out more space because uh, he recognizes that, and he's and he's investing intelligently. Yes, he is. He's um, really helping the group of us um, together. So we we have. Eileen Richards, and she does a lot of people portraits that are really bright and colorful. And she actually was one of the first it's ones stuff. to rent from David. And then next next to her, we have Shawnee Porras. And Shawnee Porras is a um, fabulous abstract artist. And each one of her pieces is inspired by a musical piece. Um, and we have Caroline Kelly, and she does like intuitive abstracts that are really fun. Um, and Marion Grant, she's currently working on a, a lot of collages. Um, and then I'm I'm next to Marion. My studio is 302. And I work in all mediums because I love them all. I can't stay focused with one. I guess I'll work in one medium for so long and then want to explore. Do you have kind of a go-to one? Um, I really love watercolor, the challenge in watercolor. Um, it, it takes me away from the world. Mm. It helps me to um, get out of my head, so to speak, and just focus on the project that I'm working on. It's um, helped a lot with healing um, from my spine surgeries and it's portable and lightweight. So <laughs> I, I, I can get, I can get, not a heavy, not a heavy lift, literally not a heavy lift. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can get involved in a watercolor piece and just lose track of the time and, uh, work on it through lunch. And it just takes me away and it's a, a great way to express um, things that are just going on in, in, um, my creative process. Um, so very meditative. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but with saying that I also do quite a few commission pieces, um, people portraits, home portraits, pet portraits, and some churches. Um, and I do that, um, original sentimental, pieces for um, people that send in their photos. They'll send two or three photos and usually have a lot of questions um, about the the person's personality, what, what they liked, what were their favorite colors and what kind of music did they listen to and try to get to know the person that I'm painting so that I can create that painting. That's an interesting look into sort of um, in what you're describing into the uh, market of being an artist. You know, that uh, there's traditionally this idea of the starving artist um, uh, meme, but there's a there's a practical aspect, and there maybe maybe some artists don't have to be practical at all. I mean, there, <laughs> but I think there are you know the commission pieces. Um, so you know, tell me about that. Is that most artists do they is it a combination of of sort of commission pieces you know versus you know pieces that you know are are what you would normally just do without any other constraints uh how does how does that all work being a professional artist um I, well i i guess i like the um 
investigation part of doing commission pieces mm. i really don't know very many artists that will um do commissions um okay. but basically um i i like for a home portrait sometimes people will send me can can you do a home portrait on this particular house and they'll send me three or four photos but within those photos there the home is like blocked by trees or there's only one section of the house so i have to do my own investigating and i'll go to google earth and see oh yeah there's a garage over here or <laughs> this is where the porch is and the deck um you can zoom in on colorations um and as far as people portraits go sometimes they'll send me their favorite photos but um the grandmother's eyes are um hidden behind the glare of her glasses and and the all the photos so i have to um try to get research i know it's not maybe their favorite photos but can you send me a photo without her glasses just so i can even um, if she's not smiling nicely tran or even, translate yeah. <laughs> those those eyes through the the lenses that's interesting and and usually on those commission pieces what is the form uh, that you use uh, you know is it are they asking for it in a certain like a watercolor or like uh late what is what um what are the kinds of paint there's oil painting which is right. less um, do you do you do oil i yes i i work in all the mediums so i've done people portraits and oil paint um and also acrylic um and watercolor um portraits as well um i th i think that uh, most of the people that have commissioned me will commission um oil paintings or acrylic but it seems like lately i'm getting more watercolor commissions maybe because i'm trying to um make it more available like um posting it on my facebook and instagram so they can see what the watercolors look like um and i think i think um traditionally people seem to have a lot more value in oil paints and they think that they might last longer, but there's a lot of um, watercolor paintings in museums that have been around for centuries. So I think it's all in what style people like in their home and um, what resonates with them. Mm. And so taking back, uh, so you talked about how you uh, went through the Pittsfield schools and and the arts were a big part of that. What happened uh, after high school? Um, well, after high school, I was signed up in some classes at Berkshire Community College. Um, and my, my goal was, of course, to get the associate's degree there and ended up taking a few of the classes, but went to work at Crane Stationery um at crane stationery i got hired to hand paint the borders on stationery for so many famous people um, so so what tell me what that entailed so you stationery in other words like what 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 does that mean like what, um, what kind of <laughs> stationery we're talking about well the best stationery in the world well right <laughs> um, the the crane the Crane family, they were just fantastic and they took such pride in their product. And um, of course it was the 100% cotton paper, which your, your pen would just glide on it. Mm. Um, and I, pretty much everything that we did was a craft in itself. We even made our own brushes. Wow. Um, which which was made with like a, a velvet and we had the wooden blocks that we it and the inks um the inks were made too, um metallic inks and and everything was like um a, a process. So take me into that. So what what tell me what the actual physical uh task that you were doing to create the state you're as the artist you're 
creating the design or um i did take part in creating some new designs but um initially it started out for for me personally as more learning the craft um which was how to handle a i call it a block but it was like several sheets like a sheet um sheets on top of one another so that it was stacked up and you fan it out in a fashion that you you actually learn how to hold it in your hands so that each sheet is spaced evenly apart from one another and um, you apply the ink with um, the brush that you make yourself and do two sides of the paper at a time and let it dry um, they were they were really concerned with ergonomics and doing everything correct so we had these amazing tables that were like giant lazy susans so we could have maybe four or five um what what i would call cuts of paper which was like a stack of paper that you were working on at the same time allowing each one to dry as the table rotates um and then so that was for clients that are really serious about their stationery. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're not you're not just uh, sending it to Kinkos and you know getting a, a bunch of letterhead. <laughs> oh, great! Um, <laughs> That's a process right there. <laughs> so, um, the the paper, the stationery would sometimes be engraved, most frequently be engraved with the clients' names. So some of the names that come to mind are Elizabeth Taylor, Henry Winkler, um, the Kennedys, um, Tom Cruise. We did Brad Pitt and Jen Aniston's stationery. And I, I always thought it was kind of funny to do Ozzy Osbourne's <laughs> black, black bordered stationery. That's that's good that's good I, yeah um and and that those were just like personal orders for these people and we did um high-end paper for tiffany and cartier and mm. and companies like that yeah yeah so uh really and so when you talk about those that quality uh it it makes an impact i mean if you you know if you were to get a letter from Elizabeth Taylor, um, you know, it's going to be something that you're probably going to keep <laughs> yeah, <laughs> forever. Absolutely. And so the quality of that letterhead, you know, that stationary, you know, whatever the product uh, was, uh, that's really amazing. I don't think people realize, I, I think we have this sense that, oh, Crane is wonderful and they made the currency and, and everything like that. Um, but, uh, but that, that quality, that process, uh, that's, that's amazing. It is. Um, they, they just really put so much thought and effort into having everything hand done, um, giving it a, a better appearance, um, crisper. The quality was just, it, it couldn't be me. There, there really had never been a way to paint the stationery through printers or presses to give it that hand done look. Um, they uh, trained me for gilding for a short time, which um, that's applying the foils, gold foils or platinum or silver foils on the edges. So that was a lot of fun as well. <laughs> gilded the gilded age yeah, that... of, of craning company that's great <laughs> um so so that continued how long were you there um i actually just retired about a month <laughs> no and a kidding. half ago for um with so I'm, 20... so I'm thinking to myself i'm like oh yeah she was a few years no she just you're, you're retiring from from crane from now. crane <laughs> yeah, with, with 25 years service oh, days. Okay. um kind of a, a blessing to re retire early and focus on my personal art um but i had been 
struggling. I had four spine surgeries and the doctors felt that at this time it would be a good idea for me to look into other avenues and kind of take it easy when I need to take it easy instead of the daily grind. Yeah. So how, how's, uh, how's your health now? Um, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm getting stronger. I have um, paralysis in my left leg and muscle atrophy that may or may not ever get better. I believe in miracles, so I'm keeping hopes high. But um, the, the rest of me is um, recuperating and I'm able to um, regain muscle strength where my nerves work. So I'm heading in the right direction. Well, you're certainly uh, doing quite a bit in our community <laughs> and uh, you know, not, not slowing down at all uh, as far as that goes. So I'm, I'm really happy that uh, you're feeling pretty good because <laughs> uh, we need you here uh, in Pittsfield uh, doing, doing great things. So, um, so tell me about the, you know, cause this is not, you know, clock tower artist isn't your first foray into this communal artist aspects there's been uh, others uh, that you've been a part of uh, over time yeah uh, as well right so um my daughter when she was in high school she was going to dance and drama and guitar lessons and she she maybe kind of wanted me out of her hair a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and said mom you, you paint and you're um having a lot of fun with your friends painting and doing this and that. So <laughs> why don't you go do that a little bit more? <laughs> right. She, she encouraged me to, um, I, I started volunteering at the Berkshire carousel where I came up with the designs and painted a horse, um, for the carousel called Cinco, um, as well as, painting for auctions so that the money would go back into the carousel and through doing that um i met um a friend from high school bonnie kirchner bonnie hosker kirchner and her husband scott kirchner from mad max um at one of the carousel events and he mentioned the art walk um coming up and that he had a space off of Mad Max that he was waiting on approval from Apple to to use that section of the space and offered it to me to show my artwork. So I was there for um, the very first art walk. Um, I can't remember the year. That's gosh. over 10 years ago. Oh my gosh. And I know. Well, I just had a Facebook memory come up from a decade ago with Mary McGinnis on the old radio show at WTBR. So at least that long ago, taking us back to 2013, uh, but probably before that, I feel like it, it started before that. Or yes. Before, um, or at least close to that time. So, so Mary McGinnis um, was the creator of the first Friday art walk in Pittsfield. She had a carrot cake business slash art gallery because she loves the arts and was a proponent and um through all her connections she found out that there's a lot of other people in downtown pittsfield that also liked arts mm. and put together this um fabulous art walk which is really coming to life again since covid and um uh rebecca breen and kimberly gritman are really coming together right now to organize the art walk starting up again in May. And it's the first Friday of every month, um, starting on May 5th. And it's going to continue on um, right through the holidays in December, always on the first Friday of the month. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, because, uh, you know, we've been missing it and anything that we can do to bring foot traffic, uh, and bring people into our, our downtown and the businesses love it because they're doing something where it's a draw of, of people who normally wouldn't necessarily be coming into their business at that time. So it's a great concept that it's always been hugely successful, uh, especially with Mary, 
um, you know, there leading the charge, and I'm, I'm glad to, to see her out there again. It's really great. So um, it's good, good energy out there right now. There is. Well, Mary's always been so encouraging and um, pulled pulled a lot of the artists together. Which, in saying that, she pulled the uh, group of us together and got got me involved in a group that became NU Arts. Um, it was a existing group previously, but it seemed like I was only there for about a week or so, and we were voting on a formal name, which um, became NU Arts, and that was on the corner of North and Union Street. Um, and I had a great 10 years there with with artists like um, Kathy Gideon and Scott Taylor. Um, I, after my last spine surgery, I had um, thoughts of just painting at home and giving up the space because the stairs are so steep. It mm. was hard for me to get around. And at that point, it was when Eileen, Richard, and Shawnee said, well, we're moving to the clock tower. They have an elevator. They have handicapped parking. And um, I, I thought it would be um, out of my budget, but going there and checking it out and seeing the elevator and talking to the owner of the building and getting prices, it ended up working out to be pretty close to exactly the same I was paying at NU Arts for mm. a bigger space mm. and the spaces are brand new. So yeah, I, I had to put some emotions aside and leave a place I was at for 10 years and go over to the clock tower and I can't be happier. Mm. The group of people that are there, are magnificent. Mm. Um, Joni Chaffee's there. Um, um, she she does some really beautiful, serene watercolor, large paintings. Um, Dr. Mark Mellinger, he he does a lot of abstract work um, and sculptures. And then we have Bruce Laird, and he's doing a lot of collage work. Um, Stacy Healy, she does some equine portraits and also some sculptures um, that she paints on. And we have Linda Petrosine. And whenever she's there, it smells so good. She works in <laughs> encaustic and it's beeswax that she works with. And she um, creates in there. Um, she, she can correct me if I'm wrong, but she puts in um, some types of paint and then some botanicals and creates these beautiful 2d artworks um and next to her we have um debbie carter and debbie carter was actually at nu arts with me years ago i was so glad that she came and joined she's a lot of fun um her her creative process involves um clothing out of recyclables mm -hmm. and she's made some amazing dresses um, yeah it's beautiful it's beautiful stuff if you've ever been uh, up there and i do recommend it, it, you know people can go there during the day not all of the spaces are necessarily going to be open at any given time unless you know it's advertised that you're you know having some open studio stuff but even if you just head up there uh, you can see some of the artwork and most of the artists are are happy to chat uh, if you're swinging by. So, uh, so I, I think that's another thing for other artists as well. They are building out that space. I feel, and uh, we've talked about this uh, quite a bit, and Eileen is, has her history in Lowell where uh, they've been very successful with uh, you know, recreating mills as artist uh, colonies and spaces and things like that. And it has spilled over into the economy um, in, in a lot of ways. So I think you know, we're not even necessarily reinventing the wheel here, but there's a good uh, indicator that uh, you know continuing to grow um, will be helpful to the economy as a whole. Um, yeah, um, we. From what I heard, we've have two new people that are joining us. Um, Stephanie, she's. Uh, 
uh, creative as far as dance goes. I believe she's a tap dancer as well as a visual artist. And another woman named Audrey. Um, I've I've seen her sculptures and they're fantastic. She actually some of them um, are gilded. Mm -hmm. So that, that <laughs> brought back some memories from my past life at Crane. Um, and um, with those studios currently being built and going in to house the new people, there already has works in progress for several more studios. Mm. So how do you <clears throat> look at moving into a work of art like a new piece you know the um the open uh canvas <laughs> the blank canvas uh you know for you how how does a piece of art generally begin for you what's the inspiration well um most recently i i can tell you about an experience um i i love paper probably from my background at Crane. Um, but as far as watercolor paper goes, I've always been a fan of arches, um, 300 pound. And the cold press um, has like some granulation and texture in it where the hot press is really smooth. And I like the granulation. Um, it, it offers... Um, uh, some more challenges but you can also work with it because it can actually create some patterns within it, within itself um and i had somebody encourage me to start painting larger and then some other person said oh geez i really like this painting do you do you think you could do something similar larger so <laughs> trying to find the larger paper people are saying we got to go big we got to right. go big you know, we got we got a big wall to fill <laughs> that, or something or, or a big space to fill <laughs> that's right so um with saying that it, it's hard to find the paper i've searched online um my very supportive husband mark he was digging in and searching trying to find some and he mentioned it to a coworker and um the coworker, um, Kyle, he knew of some other artists and he um, brought it up in conversation and he gifted me a box of these gigantic watercolor sheets. So I, I got it all ready to start a sketch and paint on it and I just kept touching it and not really knowing where I was going to go with it. And a little bit intimidated, but then as soon as I started working on it, it just mm. um, take takes me away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, looking at um, a blank canvas can be a little intimidating. <laughs> well, it's interesting because you kind of get taken away. And I guess the question is, do you have the vision of what you want to do beforehand? Or is it a process that you are just letting it come out. Yeah. And, I, and I'm, 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 I'm sure artists do it both ways. Um, I, I have some, some pieces that I started at home on the kitchen table that were just coming from my heart and soul. And then I'm glancing out the window and the next thing I know, it's like, okay, it's, it's, part of my heart and soul and then I'm adding in some visuals that I'm seeing out the window so um the process can vary and then of course with commissions I work with photos um painting outside um I I tend to paint a little on the slower side so if I'm painting plein air I never usually completely finish I might say it's finished but I like to take pictures of of what I see when I'm painting outside that way when I bring it home if there's any adjustments that I think need tweaking I can work with the photo as mm -hmm. well and you know so that is you know divine intervention spiritually do you do you are, are you a spiritual person yes yeah um born and raised catholic but um my my mom was um, 
I don't know, I guess I would say into home remedies. Um, there was, there was always teas before medicine, um, and, and Vicks rape, vapor rub, of course. Um, so she, she, she was kind of intuitive and I think passed that on, um, different things that she created through the years. Um, both my parents were very creative. So we can use more of that. Oh yeah. You know, <sighs> the black elderberry before, you know, the cold medication. How about that? Right. Yeah. yeah things like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We had, um, I chamomile tea for, I don't know if we had a big test coming up the next day and I never realized as a, as a kiddo, I'm getting this great tasting tea because this is going to relax me and then I'll be able to take that spelling quiz tomorrow. But <laughs> <laughs> um, as, as far as colds go, it was even hot water and lemon before medicine. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's uh yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we should be doing some more of that, uh, <laughs> you know, for sure. So um, gosh, do we miss anything? Did we miss anything? Um. Well, I, I have some exciting things coming up. Yeah, um, tell me about it. Um, April 2nd, I'm going to have an open studio event through the Guild of Berkshire Artists. And um, it's going to include me and Caroline Kelly. And I, I mentioned before, she's like a intuitive abstract artist. So, so what does that mean, an intuitive abstract artist? Um, well, I, I think she um has described like she just starts with a, a scribble and lets whatever's in her mind come out through movement um and i i believe for the april 2nd she's gonna have um people participate in like um a blind painting sketch so maybe with a mask or something i'm not in um, completely sure, but for for that particular event, you have to go on to the Guild of Berkshire Artists to register, um, and it's April second from one thirty to three thirty. Um, and then um, we're really gearing up because when the art walk starts up in May, uh, we have a full house there now at the clock tower, and it's growing. And we're going to participate in the first Friday art walk starting in May. And we also came together as a group and said, we need to participate in something other than the art walk because people come in and say, well, I want to tell um, a friend or somebody about what's going on here. So we've decided we're going to open up for the first Saturday of each month as well and that'll be from 11 to 4 so daytime hours um which is probably better for a lot of people too that don't like to drive at night mm. um and we'll we'll be evolving um each month with new work to show and um possibly some music and light refreshments and mm look at look forward to greeting a crowd of people yeah and get that uh get that literature down in south county and <laughs> yeah and uh, get all those tanglewood people uh, that come up during the the summer and 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 all that and i know we've talked uh, quite a bit about different ways to to market the the space and and but um but i think that uh you know tapping into what we have in the berkshires in particularly in the summertime um, is a great uh, uh, first step for sure. Yeah, you, you mentioned South County too, and um, I have a really great opportunity to show with another artist and her name is Sally Leblau. So um, we're, we're titling the tal the, um, the show Tale of Two Sallies. All right. <laughs> kind of like um, going, going to, Charles Dickens' Tale of Two Cities. Yeah, but, Sally Ford. 
but it's going to be <laughs> the best of times and the best of times. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so that, that show is going to be at the good purpose gallery 40 main street in Lee, um, with our reception on June 16th. Um, she's a phenomenal pastel artist. She's had work in New York city, Boston, Connecticut. So I'm really honored to show with her and we're going to have some musical entertainment, Mary Ann Palermo and joining her is going to be Rich and Ryan Hummel. Mm. Um, so it's sure to be a fun time. I hope people mark their calendar and come down. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. So, uh, so Sally, it has been a great pleasure chatting with you and I know we'll be seeing you down the road. And I think the clock tower artists, um, is a magnificent group full of positive energy and looking to be innovative. And I think ultimately, you know, we talk a lot about the downtown. I think it's the kind of energy that will sort of spill uh, into the downtown and vice versa, as I feel like that whole area physically can be connected if we're smart about it and if we can kind of uh, put it uh, all together as a, as a piece of a thriving hub of Pittsfield, I think uh, that's a great goal to have. Absolutely. I, I think everything's better in numbers if um, you, you stay home and work on your artwork by yourself at home. Nobody is ever going to know about you. Um, and as you probably can tell, I'm a little on the timid side, but by putting myself out there, I've met some really wonderful people, um, including yourself. You, John, you've always been a great help. Even going back in the um, very first stages of the art walk, you've always been out there for our community. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate being on the show. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. This is fun. So we'll definitely be seeing you on the road. And uh, yes, uh, love the art walk and uh, love the clock tower. So uh, keep up the good work and uh, we'll definitely be seeing you. Great. Thank you. Um, the clock The clock tower, some people are still saying, where is it? It's 75 South Church Street in Pittsfield. It's kind of on the um, opposite side of Big Y and a really great location because it's right behind Miller Art Supplies. So I know it. I, I know to, it. <laughs> I get to go pick up my supplies there. Yeah. So just think about it. So you have your supplies out front and then all the artists are right in the next lot there. So that, that should be easy to remember. Yeah. Um, that's where that's where it is. So and if people know where the Berkshire Eagle is, you know, that's the first floor in Europe and the third floor uh, there as well. Right. So, and yeah. and our doors are open till 5 p.m. So if if you come in the afternoon, um, sometimes everyone's there, but typically there's usually three or four of us there and we all love showing you our artwork and um, talking about it, sharing ideas, sharing supplies. Um, so I hope I hope you come up and see what we have going on. Let's do it. Let's do it. So Sally, uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you.